suspension of the New START nuclear treaty, emphasized that the U.S. would support Ukraine as it fought back against Russia's offensive and called on Moscow to withdraw its forces. Yeah, Lastly, yeah. I spoke briefly with Russia's Foreign Minister Lavrov on the margins of our G20. Um, actually, I don't want to do this. Um, so, good morning, my darling. Yay, 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 yay. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, so I just woke up. I just woke up. Okay, but I woke up. It was a good wake up because I feel like I um sometimes when I wake up in the mornings, I'm not always necessarily in the best mood these days. <laughs> okay, but today I woke up and I was fine immediately. And so um I was, um, I was, uh, just powering up and I saw this. Well, you know, I, I have my computer always with me. So I saw it before I actually got out of bed. So now I'm at my desk and I'm like, okay. <clears throat> um, Prince Andrew. So Prince Andrew, according to OK Magazine, is, is that a reliable source? Um, according to OK Magazine, he's threatening to take down the monarchy with a dark tell-all book if King Charles does not reinstate his royal payments. <laughs> the, the monarchy is going to unravel for sure, but it's not necessarily going to come from a revolution because I don't think the British people are in the mood for a revolution. I mean, it's not like the French, you know, they were bloodthirsty at that time. They were ready to take out poor Marie Antoinette, whom I love and identify with so much. Here she is. <laughs> the first thing I ever painted ever. And my mother, when my mother saw it, she's like, you know what? You scare me, Marion. <laughs> because I don't know why I painted her. I don't know. You know, I don't paint. I had never really, I painted some ships and boats, like when I first started to paint when I was in Texas in the U.S. And, um, but then this is really the first thing I painted. I painted it from um, a picture in a book that I have. And um, so, yeah, I completely identify with Marie Antoinette. And, um, you know, but the French people, I mean, this, this king queen thing, I mean, it just didn't work out so great. You know what I mean? They're just like, yo, biatch, you gotta go. <laughs> and they fixed her up, you know, and I, but I identify with her and I, I love her. I mean, I would totally have it would be like Megan, I think. I would have been her biggest defender ever. The 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 unraveling of the British monarchy is going to come from within. It's going to come from within and it's going to involve more people than we expect. Because first you have, you know, Harry and Meghan and how, you know, that may have been catalytic. It, it, indeed, it may have been. But in the end, it's not even going to be Harry and Meghan who brings the monarchy down. Because at this point, they are so out of favor with, you know, a significant percentage or proportion of the British population that they don't really have the power to bring down the monarchy. I think it's going to be other players or a totality of the circumstances situation. So now you have this thing with Prince Andrew and this book. Is this true? I don't know, but I can tell you something about Prince Andrew. He's a businessman. This is a businessman. And Sarah is a businesswoman. If you recall back in like the 90s or, yeah, I think it was the 90s, very late 90s or something where Sarah was caught trying to cut deals for people who wanted access to Andrew. And Andrew denied involvement and Sarah denied Andrew's involvement. But in light of everything, was he involved? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. 
right? But I would, I would, I would argue that it would not have been beneath him. He's a business man and he has bells. You know, they, they have a, they had a place in, in Switzerland, a winter house, and they have this lodge, which, okay, he pays a minimal, um, stipend for it, but they, they have a posh life. They've got to pay for all of the, the upkeep and the utilities, apparently. And now he's been cut off from all royal duty, so he has no income. What is he supposed to do? Go and work for Zaha, okay? Is, what is he supposed to do? Go haul, you know, trash on the garbage truck, you know, or, or what? He, he needs to live, Everybody needs to live. And the idea that you just cut this guy off like this, okay, he has been accused of wrongdoing. And if indeed these things happened, I would say that it is, it's not great. It's not good. I mean, but at the same time, you know, this person who accused him, I mean, I don't know, didn't she make some other accusations about some other people? I mean, I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to sit here and, you know, blame the victim, but I would also say that, I mean, look, I mean, I understand that a, you know, there's an, there's a cutoff age. You, if it's, if it's against the law, it's against the law. You can't, you can't do certain things, but let me tell you something. I mean, you know, some of these yacht girls, I mean, you know, I don't know. I mean, they know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, they they know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they are getting into. They are intentional about what they do, right? I'm not saying that this particular person in this particular case is that, but I'm saying many of them know what they're doing. And the fact that they're technically under 18 or whatever the, the cutoff age is for this kind of stuff, I mean, it is is a, is a fact they use to their advantage when it's convenient. You see, again, I'm not saying this girl or woman is that, but you know, I'm saying I don't really know what happened here with Andrew, and I'm not condoning it. I'm not excusing it. I'm saying I don't know what happened. I really don't know what happened. Right? Um, a lot of terrible people did a lot of terrible things, but I mean, I wasn't there. The bottom line is. This guy has to live. He has to make a living, I think. I think as long as he's not dead, he's going to have to eat. He's going to need a roof over his head. He's going to need a car. Um, he has a wife. He, you know, he has responsibilities, right? Also, he has come to expect a certain standard of living, wrongly or, or rightly right? I mean, in divorce, a wife or a spouse is entitled to continue at the same standard of living after the divorce as they had during the marriage, at least for a certain period of time. And Andrew has been accustomed to, rightly or wrongly, a certain standard of living. And now you want to, him to go slumming in, um, what you call it in a smaller house whereby he, he doesn't want, and then you're cutting off his purse, right? There's no money. This is going to make him angry. And frankly, it shouldn't come as a big surprise. And, but not only is it going to make him angry, the practicality of the thing is that he needs an income. He needs to live. He needs to eat. He needs to take care of his himself as an old man. He needs money in the bank. Everybody does. And so the idea that he is going to um, write a book is, is for me, not that shouldn't come as a big shock. It should not come as a big shock to anybody because what else is he going to do? What else does he have to sell? He's a businessman. He has watched what Harry did with Harry's memoir. I mean, Harry has made over $20 million. I mean, this is a significant ch chunk of change, right? And Andrew is doing the math. He's doing the calculus. He's doing the arithmetic, 
okay? And he's just hearing ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching in his head, okay? And he has the goods and he knows human nature. They want the dirt. They want the filth. They want the bad news. They want the gossip. This is how human beings are wired. Because you know why? Because earth is, earth is hell. People don't know it. And I mean it in the most literal sense. Okay. We were created to be exactly what we are. And that is dark, right? And that's why people gravitate to the prurient. It takes work to gravitate towards things that are not filthy on the earth, right? So, yeah. And so Andrew knows that and he's going to find a way to monetize that because he doesn't have a choice if he doesn't have an income. And yeah, I mean, he says he's going to spill details on Queen Elizabeth and Philip, allegedly, allegedly. I don't know that he said any of those things according to um, Radar Online, apparently. Prince Andrew threatening to write bombshell tell-all about King Charles unless his paychecks are reinstated. I mean, so it's basically a shakedown, allegedly. Look, I mean, what can I say? None of it surprises me. It shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody, as a matter of fact. This monarchy is going to implode from within. Pourquoi ça fait comme ça? Um, this monarchy is going to implode from within. Then you have the Camilla files, the Camilla factor. Camilla hasn't played her last song yet, right? She's, she, 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 I mean, we don't, look, this monarchy is going to implode from within because William is going, you, you saw what William did to Harry? William is under a lot of pressure and it's not just Harry, you see? We don't have all the information. William is going to play a very big role in the utter implosion of this monarchy from within because Camilla, you know, Camilla is an X factor, you know, Camilla, don't, don't, don't turn your back on Camilla because she will have the laws changed even if her son is not Prince I mean, King Charles' son, even if Tom Parker Bowles is really Andrew Parker Bowles' son. And I mean, at this point, have you seen a DNA test? I haven't seen a DNA test. I have no idea. These people, Charles and Camilla, for years and years and years, before I was even born, were boinking. Do you know what boink means? Okay, boink. Boink, 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 boinker, 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 boink. They've been boinking for a long time. And so any of Camilla's children potentially could be Charles because I'm sure he was not utilizing prophylactics, okay? Not based on certain comments he made about being her tampons, okay? So <laughs> I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you said that, but that's what it is, okay? And so Andrew is going to be very pivotal in the implosion of the monarchy, but he's not the only one. There's going to be an internal war in this family. And they think that it's easy. Just throw Andrew into the burning inferno, put him in Frogmore Cottage, let everybody see him and talk about him every day in the press, then tell him, oh, I'm sorry, we can't do anything to help you. It's not our fault. It's the people. Toss him out completely. He's not an idiot. He's going to fight back. And once he starts down that road, who else has a gripe? There are many deep gripes because this idea of primogeniture and the firstborn getting everything in his family into perpetuity is insane. It's insane. It's unfair. It's it's unworkable. We have we have inter internet. We have information. 
we know that this is nonsense and in the family they know it's nonsense and they saw the success Harry has had in two years by getting out they're going to capitalize on it Fergie's already trying to do that the business people it's going to implode from within mark my words Harry and Meghan don't have to do anything else they just need to buy their house in the Alps and they need but you know be very discreet. Be very, very, very discreet, Harry and Meghan. You saw what they did to poor Marie Antoinette in this country. <laughs> be very discreet with that, okay? Yeah, anyway, gotta go. 